Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everybody. First of all, I would like to say thank you for joining us today. And I would like to congratulate all of you for being the first participant in our first webinar series in production, planning and control, issue and research topic from August 2021 that we will help and from August 2021 till March 2022. The webinar are organized by Manufacturing Research Group Institute Technology Bandung with the co-host Industrial Engineering Study Program from several university, Uni Universitas Ahmad Yani, Universitas Islam Bandung, Institut Teknologi Nasional, Universitas Trisakti, Institut Teknologi Harapan Bangsa, dan N Telkom University. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Doki Saraswati, and I'm a lecturer in Industrial Engineering Study Program at Universitas Trisakti, and I'll be the moderator for today. Before we start our session, let us go through to some announcements that we can have an uninterrupted and a smooth session. Firstly, please mute your microphone before and during the webinar session as the session will be recorded. Therefore, we seek your kindness assistance. Secondly, today's webinar will be divided into two sections. The first one will be conducted by our keynote speaker, Professor Abdul Hakim Halim, who will present what industrial engineering problems and the solution methods. And the second part will be the Q&A session, which will, which will be moderated by me. Kindly know that the audience is encouraged to ask questions and please relate it to today, today topic through the chat box down below. And I'll be reading your question accordingly depending to the remaining time that we have today. The question can be in Bahasa. Okay, let, last but not least, we would really appreciate if you could share with us the feedback of today's webinar session through the link that we share through the chat box. And please don't miss to fill the attendance list. To start the first session, let me introduce our distinguished keynote speaker, Professor Abdul Hakim Halim. Professor Abdul Hakim Halim is a professor in industrial engineering. Uh, he uh, got it from for the bachelor and master degree from Institute Technology Bandung and doctor from University of Osaka Prefecture, Japan. The research area is scheduling, scheduling inventory and manufacturing system design. He published so many papers in several journals, such as uh, in especially in the topic of scheduling inventory areas in international journals, such as IGPR, AJOR, PPC, IGPE, IGTEC, and International Conference Proceedings. Professor Abdul Hakim Halim is also the guest editor for Computer and Industrial Engineering. Former president of Asia Pacific Industrial Engineering and Management Society, APMs, and fellows of APMs and IEOM. Okay, let me begin with the opening address from Professor Abdul Hakim Halim in the webinar series on production, planning, and control. We will begin with the lecture session until 9.45. Please, Prof. Abdul Hakim Halim, the time is yours. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my presentation. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Saraswati, for introducing me uh, very nicely. 
distinguished participants. First of all, I would like to deliver my deep thanks uh, for your participation in this uh, webinar. And I hope you all already uh, know the motivation of holding this seminar because I have written the uh, motivation on the uh, opening address uh, that maybe you have already uh, it and you have already read uh, all of the document. So I can go directly into my presentation and let me share screen of my presentation material. Is there my presentation uh, point, PowerPoint? It's OK? Yes, Prof. It's clear. OK. Yeah. As it is uh, display in the screen, so my topic uh, for today's uh, presentation is industrial engineering uh, problems and uh, solution methods. I would like to start with this quote, scientists investigate that which already is, but engineers create that which has never been. We have heard the story, and this could be a legend actually, that Newton was sitting under an apple tree, an apple fell on his head, and he suddenly thought of the universal law of gravitation. Of course, we understand that an apple falls down from a tree had happened for a very long time since the time before Newton formulated the new gravitation law. And we go to the uh, engineers. We can see that the first handheld cellular phone call was made on April the 3rd in 1973. It means that before this time, no handphone. So engineer really created what, have, uh, what has never been. So I would like to uh, explain this presentation by the following uh, scheme. So we can see here that, uh, First of all, I would like to explain about uh, the system and then uh, about engineering. And we also see that uh, James Newton Gunn proposed this uh, terminology and people agree to accept industrial engineering uh, terminology. And then this go to uh, the uh, meaning of industrial engineering. And in 1980, uh, 1948, AIIE, American Institute of Industrial Engineering, divine formal definition, which is actually different from uh, the original because in a formal definition, it doesn't mention anything about uh, manufacturing or shop load. So this is a called integrated system. And then I will try to uh, make a, a shortening of uh, the definition so that we can easily understand what is, what does an industrial engineer do. Let me start. And also we, we would like to explain uh, how about the education in industrial engineering? And finally, we would like to define what is the IE problem and the solution methods. So Robert Henry Thurston, the first president of American Society of Mechanical Engineers in his inauguration speech in 1880 stated that engineer should understand the relationship between engineering design and production with cost accounting 
to calculate production and life cycle cost of engineering uh, product. So it means that a mechanical, a mechanical engineer uh, recognize that uh, cost accounting is important uh, to an engineer. Accordingly, uh, we can see that uh, we know that cost accounting is one of the topic uh, in industrial engineering education. In 1870 to 1880, many critics occur on factory workers working with their own equipment and methods. In the era, Taylor started introducing systematic management methods and discuss the problems at meeting held by ASME. In 1901, James Newton Gunn, in his article, proposed a need to establish a new profession like electrical engineering and mechanical engineering. And he called the new profession production or industrial engineering. And the society agreed to choose industrial engineering as the name of the profession. So the first one who introduced the industrial engineering is not uh, people who we know as initiators like Taylor, uh, Gilbreth, and so on. But Newton Gunn, Newton Gunn is the first one who proposed the name for the profession as industrial engineering. Taylor published the principle of scientific management and Gilbert published motion study. And in 1908, Hugo Dimmer proposed to establish a department of industrial engineering at Penn State University. And in 1909, the department was formally established. So if one asked me which uh, university establishing the uh, industrial engineering for the first time. So the answer is Penn State. In 1958, Professor Matthias Aruf of Institute Technology Bandung started lectures on the industrial engineering topics at the concentration of production engineering, the Department of Mechanical Engineering ITB, such as cost accounting, engineering economy, statistics, and enterprise management and the Department of Industrial Engineering at IT was formally established in 1971. Industrial engineering is not a new prof profession. So it has been uh, started from uh, 1880 or something like that. So first of all, I would like to uh, introduce, you, uh, introduce you about the basic theory of system. This is the definition uh, proposed by uh, Wason, an integrated set of interoperable element or entity, each with specified and bounded capability, configured in various combinations that enable specific behaviors to emerge for common and control by users to achieve performance-based mission outcome in a prescribed operating environment with a probability of success. And Turner also uh, write in, in his book, uh, a set of components which are related by some form of interaction and which act together to achieve some objective or purpose. So we can see that the keyword for the meaning of system is objective yeah, outcomes in this uh, definition and also we talk about subsystems or element and interaction. So this is the keyword for the meaning of a system. And I would like to show you a picture and we can show you this uh, system X is an open system because this interact with the surrounding environment and also interact with the system Y. So system X and system Y is uh, an, an open system. But system Z 
this is a closed system because uh, there is no interaction uh, with uh, uh, environment. So don't confuse between open versus closed systems and open loop versus a closed loop system. So I'd like to show the open loop system is this. Uh, transformation process is an activity to convert the input to output. But the characteristic of these open loop systems, no aware of its own performance, no control mechanism, and past action has no influence on future action. Actually, maybe there is uh, influence on uh, future action, but we don't know because we never make any feedback from output to input. Accordingly, kita, uh, we, we, we uh, introduce a closed loop system where the closed loop system uh, uh, is provided by a feedback system. And this related to system performance. So we can uh, compare the output and the input and the result the result of past action uh, influence influence uh, future actions, uh, and it can be identified. So, open versus closed system relate to the interaction between the system and its environment, while open loop versus closed loop system related to the existence of uh, feedback. So. When we try to uh, uh, know the uh, the uh, performance, we know there is uh, there are three uh, performance: efficiency, effectiveness, and productivity. And we can see that the formulation is the same. That is, output is divided by an output. So if someone say that there is output and input and the value, let's say 1.5. So 1.5 can be efficiency, can be effectiveness, and can also be uh, productivity. It's very clear to distinguish efficiency, effectiveness, and productivity if the system do improvement, do improving uh, itself. So, we can see that efficiency is uh, focus to input, and we assume that output is fixed. And effectiveness, we focus on output, and we uh, assume that input is uh, fixed. Productivity, we uh, consider output and input, the change, the change of output and input. And then uh, Peter Drucker uh, tried to define efficiency as doing things right and effectiveness as doing the right thing. So productivity can be defined as doing the right thing right. Efficiency and effectiveness also Consider are uh, considered as prerequisite for productivity. Note that efficiency and effectiveness are not always in line. If a system is efficient, it doesn't mean that the system must be effective. Or if a system is effective, it doesn't mean that the system must be efficient. You can see here. So we can see that. Effectiveness low, efficiency can low, but juga can be high. So maybe if we say that effectiveness means, that for example, uh, doing the this is uh, this one doing the rings the wrong thing in the wrong way. It means that the company produce uh, uh, the product that doesn't, uh, that the customer doesn't need. And wrong way means at a high cost. So efficiency low mean high cost. 
and efficiency high mean low cost and effectiveness low mean not uh, as needed by customer and this is uh, as needed by customer so it's uh, uh, possible not efficient not effective not efficient uh, effective and also very efficient but not effective or very efficient also very effective and in the improvement uh, side it's possible that if uh, input constant and output also constant, it means that there is no added value. And if uh, input decreasing is good, of course, but if the output also decreasing, it should be a shrinking situation, but it's okay if input decrease faster. So you can uh, maybe observe uh, the others. The ratio of output to input also work for financial performance. We know return on investment mean return divided by investment. This is output and this is input. And return on equity is the same. Uh, benefit cost ratio, benefit uh, divided by cost. Return on that is the same. So. Uh, the ratio of output to input work for uh, financial performance too. And the second part of this presentation is about engineering. EBIT accreditation board for engineering and technology define engineering as the profession in which a knowledge of the mathematical and natural sciences gained by study experience and practice is applied with judgment to develop ways to utilize economically the material and forces of nature for the benefit of mankind. And try to compare to the definition of industrial engineering. Uh, I, I, I take only this part. It draw upon specialized knowledge and skill in the mathematical, physical, and social sciences together with the principle and methods of engineering analysis and design. So. Is exactly the same. So accordingly, I would like to say that industrial engineering is an engineering field. It is not social, it is not management, but we need management to understand the industrial engineering. In engineering field of specialization, uh, there are electrical engineering, computer engineering, and also industrial engineering and industrial engineering is a profession and we know the requirement from for the profession body of knowledge we have industrial engineering have body has body of knowledge education training and preparation to get into the profession is, of, is uh, really we we have uh, uh, undergraduate graduate uh, doctorate program. So it is one of the uh, situation where uh, education uh, uh, conducted. Also training and preparation and others, and also performance uh, st standard and ethic rules. We have also the ethical rule. And we have also professional organization and everyone understand the task and the responsibility to the organization. So industrial engineering satisfies the situation. Let's go to definition of industrial engineering. In actually, this is start in 1948 when American Institute of Industrial Engineering was founded. The definition is industrial engineering is concerned with design improvement and installation of integrated system of man, material, and equipment. Industrial engineering draws upon specialist knowledge and so on. And let's have a look at the definition made in 1960. 
we can see that there is an addition uh, subsystem of the integrated system, energy. In this definition, there is no, there is no energy, but here we, and they change the industrial engineering to it. Yeah. But this, this uh, still man is used. And this the last, uh, the most recent uh, definition from Industrial Institute of Industrial and System Engineering. So there are many things. Uh, this is addition uh, and system. And also man change to people. And there's another additional uh, subsystems information. But actually, no difference from the previous definition except the addition of term of systems, so this one, the change of men to people, and the addition of information. So in more than 70 years, the definition have not changed except in the term use and the system or component, the subsystem or component of integrated system. So we can also divide uh, the definition into uh, several parts. There are knowledge, mathematics, physics, social science, principle and method of engineering analysis. There is an ability to design, to improve, to install, and to specify, to predict, to evaluate. And this is the object where industrial engineering work. The object is integrated system of people, material, information, equipment, and energy. It doesn't mention that it is for manufacturing system, but for integrated system, but consists of these equipment, these uh, subsystems and the output. Yeah. And we can see that knowledge and object are dynamic, can be changed anytime. This is the knowledge is developing. Maybe we can add this machine learning, for example, or whatever the, uh, to, to uh, deal with uh, current condition. This also could be, ad could be added. So two, two parts object and knowledge skill are dynamic, but the ability is fixed. So because it's dynamic, so maybe we don't have to say, don't have to mention in detail. So we try to uh, see uh, a definition should explain what industrial engineers do. And the official definition of industrial engineering has well satisfied the criterion, but it's too long, making it difficult to understand what industrial engineers, industrial engineers do. This could be the reason there are many different interpretations. We may shorten the official definition to easily and concisely understand what industrial engineering is. So this is just the way how to understand easily, not to change the definition formally. Yeah. So this is the definition uh, made by IISE. And we can see that this can be shortened, can be eliminated because dynamic part of the definition. The subsystem can be added anytime. And is this also, it draw upon specialist knowledge. It's also dynamic because the knowledge is developing. Yeah. And 
last part of this definition to specify, predict, evaluate the result to be obtained from such system. It can be said that design, improvement, and installation process are conducted by any people through the activity of specifying, predicting, and evaluating. So first of all, we should specify, predict, evaluate, and then we do design improvement and installation. So this also uh, could be eliminated. So the brief de definition becomes industrial and system engineering is concerned with design improvement and installation of the optimal methods for integrating people, material, information, equipment, and energy. But I can make more uh, shorten. Industrial and system engineering is concerned with optimized design, improvement, and installation of integrated system. So what is the subsystem of this integrated system? We don't have to mention. And the knowledge needed for doing this also, we know that must it must be needed. Uh, knowledge, but we don't have to mention. So we can see that the definition is more it is is easier to 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 understand. Yeah. So the keyword of the definition is design improvement and or installation, and then integrated system and optimize alternatives. Yeah. We searching for the best solution. So. This is an integrated system, and we try to design and improve when we do this by optimization. Optimize design, improvement, and installation of integrated systems. So it's very easy to identify what does an industrial engineer do? Design, improvement, installation. How to do that? Optimize. So not that system actually has included the meaning of integrated. Therefore, the term of integrated with integrated system could be redundant actually. However, the word integrated is essential for emphasizing that the most crucial characteristic of a system is integration among its element, meaning holistic. So we still accept uh, the integrated, the word of integrated, because the most important, the most is the essential for emphasizing uh, that uh, holistic. So engineering design, yeah, because we talk about design, and this must be engineering design. Abbott divine. Engineering design is the process of devising a system, component, or process. So we can see, can be a system, can be a component, can be a process. This engineering is so it's not only a component or, or a product, a concrete product, but a process can be designed. So in, in banking, industry, for example, we can design the process. It is a decision-making process, often iterative, in which the basic science and mathematics and engineering science are applied to convert resources optimally to meet a stated objective. Among the fundamental elements of the design process are the establishment of objective and criteria, synthesis, analysis, construction, testing, and evaluation. So this is uh, in the definition, maybe it can be related to, to specify, predict, evaluate the result to be obtained from the SAS system. And then, the meaning of improvement is maybe uh, we can uh, base on the PDCA concept, plan to check action, plan to 
check and the result of checking it uh, possible objective achieve or objective not achieve if objective achieve and then we do enhancement but if don't achieve we do a, a correction so this is the action so anytime we can improve the system so we know the continuous improvement so the improvement is 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 a very important word in industrial engineering field and install install is the process or activities to make the result of design improvement uh, ready to be implemented we should identify potential problems so we have to identify what the problem could be occur if we implement our design among the fundamental element of the design process are the establishment of objective and criteria synthesis analysis concept testing and evaluation yeah so this is the meaning of installation and then integrated system consists of people material and so on it can be uh, many additional uh, subsystem then because uh, in the, the definition it doesn't mention uh, manufacturing system so integrated system could be any system concrete systems service system profit or non-profit oriented system or an integrated system then work the definition work for any system and now optimization the optimization concept can be few in the broad context not only relate to the mathematical context there are so the important thing is there are thread of among solution alternatives so that we should choose the best solution in any problem we are facing there are thread of and we should choose the best solution so it doesn't mean only for manufacturing system optimization based modeling so we, we know the the procedure uh, i will explain later model is a simplification of the real world through applying assumption objective fun there also objective function efficiency effectiveness and productivity there are constraint feasible solution that we have to choose the best and optimal solution is best solution among feasible solution and we do also verification and validation process and we have to choose the solution method so this is uh, we will explain later and we can understand now that system thinking is a system approach so i was asked uh, what is the difference between system thinking and system approach so i i answer the system thinking is a system approach this must be holistic interdisciplinary integrative integrative optimal interaction among subsystem to obtain value added and <clears throat> akop define uh, system approach a system is more than the sum of each part it is an indivisible whole yeah so this is important it loses its essential property when it is taken apart taken apart the element of a system may themselves be systems and every system may be part of a larger system now we can conclude that industrial engineering adopt the so called system thinking an approach to problem solving so what is the system thinking the definition i propose an approach to problem solving feeling that system consists simultaneously yeah, consists of interoperable uh, system and also constitute a component of more system so it can be uh, consists of and can be uh, a component of more uh, comprehensive extensive so this uh, the the preposition 
And system thinking involves much more than an instant reaction to current event, but demand a more profound and comprehensive understanding of the linkage, interaction, and behavior among the elements constructing the entire system. So this is what we have to teach to our student. It's very difficult, yeah. So to teach the system approach to students who just graduated from high school. So we don't, we don't forget that our students just graduated from high school. It is not easy to ask. We need a, le a learning platform. Because of this, we need a learning platform and we choose manufacturing system. So the question is why? why manufacturing system is chosen. The reason for choosing manufacturing as a learning platform, the first one is historical background. Since Taylor start from uh, show floor from manufacturing system. The second, a manufacturing system has complete subsystem. So if uh, the definition say uh, people, material, yeah, information, energy, and so on, all are in the manufacturing system. But in, in banking system, for example, it's very hard to find the, the, the equipment or any other subsystem. But for uh, manufacturing system, they're complete subsystem. And the third one, manufacturing system is a concrete system relating to component, the component is concrete. Yeah, material, and then uh, a painting, uh, any, any, any component is very concrete. And also the state and stage of conversion process also concrete. We can see the, the, the change from a material with two meters to be a material in one meter each. It's very, very easy to see. The change from raw material to be uh, a chair, a computer. So it's very easy to see. But in the surface system, it's very difficult to see relationship between material input and output. But in manufacturing system can be. Uh, like this. A manufacturing system is also an important sector. No, we know Japan, Thai, uh, Taiwan, they live from a uh, manufacturing system. And a manufacturing system is omnipresent, can be found, can be found anywhere. So because of this, maybe this is, uh, will make it uh, easier to explain to students uh, who maybe for the first time should learn about uh, system uh, approach, which is very, very abstract. Note that a manufacturing system is only a learning platform. Therefore, the graduate don't have to work for the manufacturing system, but any system, such as financial system, airline, hospital, construction industry, or any other system. So the graduate could benchmark or make an analogy of any tuition system to the manufacturing that they have learned. So, we learn about manufacturing system, and then we try to make analogy to the other system that we choose for working. So this is body of knowledge. So I would like, uh, I will not uh, talk about this. And now we can see that industrial engineering discipline adopt the manufacturing system as a learning uh, uh, platform. 
in responding to the simultaneous development markets with customers with customized product and technology such as industry 4.0 the manufacturing system may change from current manufacturing to smart manufacturing system these changes are not changes the industrial engineering framework of thought but changes only the learning platform from traditional manufacturing to smart manufacturing i'd like to also uh, distinguish between uh, the meaning of manufacturing and production production appear in in uh, 1483 and the meaning is making a new things manufacturing is uh, younger and the meaning is making by hand so it is uh, general but in a specific making by hand so product production is related to as a concrete or abstract output production is general understanding of confer seen con confer seen uh, a process from input to output manufacturing is pertaining of only concrete output this is in the old understanding the meaning of production and manufacturing was changed and we know that cirp is an organization on production research and issue a definition a series of interrelated activities and operation involving the design material selection planning manufacturing production and so on and we can see that production is part of manufacturing and a production system is a conversion from a work process in a state condition of another to another condition in a state closer to product yeah so this like this the production system there are any status of work in process and change to a new status and this is finished uh, finished good so it is closer of course closer than than this one manufacturing system is conversion process from a customer need to a finished product so customer desired manufacturing system and so this is more than production system uh, process and it can be see from manufacturing cycle so there is market research product design process design production planning production activity and if there is a different between plan and the uh, uh, real uh, condition in the factory we have make a production control and it could be could change the uh, previous plan and if it's okay the finished product will be resulted and then warehouse distribution <clears throat> until cast consumer market and then we do again market research to answer whether the product is still the same or have already been changed and this is the production system and the all is uh, manufacturing system so this also can be uh, can show you the difference so this is the production system and this is our the manufacturing system and if we add this this is uh, become a company system Uh, this is about manufacturing design there are two two things human activity system and management control is this physical and this is management yeah so you can see this uh, this is the management control system so planning uh controlling and so on is this management control system and uh, yeah human activity system is this facility layout 
location, capacity planning, and so on. So we have to design a manufacturing system with two uh, aspect. So now what is the IE problem and solution method? We can define problem is problems occur when the real condition we are facing is different from the desired condition. I would like, I want to three, I want a three point, but there's only one point. That's different. It's problems. We want something, but it's different from the the, the, the real condition. So industrial engineering try to solve the problem. And what is the problem of industrial engineering? What is the engineering industrial engineering problem? All problem in which there are this one: design, improvement, installation, integrated system, and optimization. If there are these. It must be an industrial engineering problem. And then how about problem solving? We need methodology. And what is the industrial engineering methodology? Yeah, in also tool and methods. Quantitative could be qualitative. And we try to search the best solution. So let back to let's go back to a uh, brief definition industrial and system engineering concerned with design improvement or, or this one industrial engineering is concerned with optimized design improvement and installation of in itself so the keyword is this for uh, industrial engineering problem that that must be this one yeah, one day um, a, a lecturer at a big university asked me that uh, he is facing problems because student many times asked me to to uh, to to make agreement that the problem that uh, for for his thesis is like this. But I'm not sure whether it is industrial pro engineering problem or not. And the answer is, as far as there is design improvement and or installation, as far as integrated system, we deal with integrated system, and we try to find the best solution. This is a problem of industrial engineering. Yeah, so this is the, the picture, the figure for uh, industrial engineering problem. And we can see that independent of object, in any object, could be financial, could be construction, could be hospital, anything. But we talk about this. How, how about the, the the solution method. We do modeling process. The real world, we uh, simplify by assumption and then model, and we find the solution method, and then we find the solution and interpret it, and then we can get the interpretation, and then we implement the interpretation. But we know that uh, many people may be different in uh, what they propose. Uh, to make uh, the difference uh, close, closer, we learn about reference model. Then, uh, especially this is from operation research models. This is uh, reference models. Uh, many cases that we already do this uh, step, but the real world uh, has not uh, been solved. Why? Because maybe in the problem of modeling, maybe we uh, define 
we build a model that is not a representative of a real world because of this the solution is not the solution for real world but this is only the solution for models because of this the most important step is in modeling yeah because if model has been defined and then the solution is uh, we must be uh, agree each other model is a representation of the real world through simplification by making assumption and model component is uh, model components are objective function constraint variables parameter alternative solution feasible region and optimal solution okay so now the solution methods in industrial engineering actually we have to start solving the problem by adopting the analytical method method so the first question is can the problem be modeled in analytical approach if okay we uh, formulate the analytical model and then the, the next question is is this analytical model can be solved by analytical solution if okay solve the problem and finish but if analytical solution cannot solve the analytical model we try to develop heuristic solution and can heuristic solution uh, solve the problem if okay yes, solve the problem but if not do simulation so simulation must be the last result for solving the problems we cannot solve problem directly by simulation we have to check whether analytical model can be used or not if we could not use and then we can go to simulation models and then if analytical model cannot be uh, deformulated and then we use standard model yeah we use linear programming or uh, non-linear programming uh, yeah any any model and then the question uh, if yes our standard model can be adopted and then our standard model and then solve the problem but if we can uh, do with this model we have to develop a new models not or models not analytical model whatever the model is and then try to solve by heuristic but if we cannot use the heuristic then we use simulation model so in the future maybe we solve the problem by this because heuristic model and could be a new model and we have to uh, develop a solution method and what i i just explained is maybe too much related to mathematical but actually it's not uh, limited to mathematical approach it could be could be any 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 solution method because industrial engineering also is not limited to a solution a certain solution method but it can uh, use any any uh, model concluding remark the industrial engineering discipline can be implemented to any object of the integrated system therefore industrial engineers and this industrial graduate could work for any integrated systems not limited to the manufacturing system company in the education of the industrial discipline even though like this but for education we adopt manufacturing system and the reason is manufacturing system essential complete concrete subsystem feasible interaction among subsystem physical conversion so we see that the conversion is physical and omnipresent and relevant to historical point of view manufacturing has been developed from traditional manufacturing to 
a smart manufacturing system. The development is to respond the paradigm change from economy of scales or mass production to economy of scope is customized product or mass customization. We do mass production, but with uh, we do customization, but with the cost of mass production. So customization with low cost, meaning products producing customized product with higher quality and lower cost. In responding to demand pattern change and the development of technology such as Industry 4.0. The industrial engineering framework of SOAT is not changed. The changes are in the learning platform from traditional to smart manufacturing system. Industrial engineering should be capable of designing yeah, the physical mana. system and the management control system. Thank you very much for your attention and this all of my presentation. Thank you, and please, uh, Dr. Doki, to take again the session. Still mute? Bu. You are still mute. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Hakim, for the sharing of the valuable presentation that give us the in-depth understanding about industrial engineering hoping that we have all the same perception regarding the definition of industrial engineering. Design, improvement, installation of an integrated manufacturing, but now it is added by the word optimization. Uh, there are three, now we come to the second part. This is a Q&A session. There are Three questions, Prof. Hakim. The first question comes from Mr. Ada Ilhami. The question is, what is our role and what should be prepared in facing industrial 4.0 era as industrial engineer, student, and industrial engineering department? Uh, one by one, Prof. Uh, all. All, okay. Yeah. The second question comes from Mrs. Hen Henny Husnia from University uh, Universitas Lang Lang Buana. Bagaimana, uh, how the dynamically system to be adapted into manufacturing system? Second question. The third question comes from Mr. Jauhan Arifin. Based on definition of IE, operating system is not include of IE. We learn finance, production, human resources, production ITC, which is in the company need to be operated for achieving the goals of company. Is that IE has no competence to be manager or director in the company or organization? Yes, that's the three questions, Prof. Hakim, please. Thank you very much. For the first questions, uh, Industry 4.0 just... Uh, uh, technology, just technology that can be adapted or not. It depends on the situation. For example, uh, what I know uh, we have in Indonesia uh, the manufacturing producing uh, BMW. Yeah. In that manufacturing, in that factory, uh, how to install the, what we call it, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the part of, of the BMW, I don't know the name, is uh, done manually. Yeah, manually. Because the number of product is still very few. So no point to use technology. But in the, uh, main factory yeah, in Germany, the technology is used, is being used because they make uh, many num the, the, a number yeah, of the production. So it's just uh, uh, 
just technology that can be adopted or not. So we can, we as industrial engineer, we have to uh, analyze, we have to evaluate whether a technology 4.0 is needed or not, something like that. And then if the answer is uh, needed, then we adopt. For the second question, the dynamic system. System is, is, is very dynamic now. Uh, uh, we know that many things and the, the change is uh, very fast. Because of this, we, can, uh, we have to identify what kind of factors that may change the system. And we have to anticipate the answer for this, that change. So uh, for these uh, questions, yeah, we, we have to anticipate the dynamic uh, condition for the system and for anything, for methods, for technology, for anything, we have to anticipate because uh, the dynamic, you know, in the very uh, short time, the change is very short time. And for the third questions, this is, uh, from the point of view of, of uh, industrial engineering discipline. Industrial, and as industrial engineering discipline is not management discipline. Because of this, operating system is not included into industrial engineering. But it doesn't mean that Industrial engineering and industrial engineer could not be a manager, but when he become a manager, he is not industrial engineer anymore, but he is a manager. But he is, can be simultaneously also industrial engineer. But the role is not industrial engineer, but the role is as a manager because no design, no improvement no installation. So it means that operating is not included into the industrial engineering programs. Yeah, I think that's my answer. Good okay. Thank you, Prof. Hakim. That is the second part, Prof. There are two questions. Uh, both come from Universitas Atmajaya, Jogja. First from Mr. Laksito. What should SME prepare in facing smart manufacturing system? Second, SME. the second from Mrs. Yosefin, the same university. Sometimes I hear debates about the meaning of optimum, for example, when judging or claiming whether the result of an improvement is just better or the best. Please enlighten. Yes, there's two quick questions, Prof. For the first because question, what is? What should SME? SME, what small, is it? Yeah. Small, medium, ah. right? Prepare in facing smart, smart manufacturing system. Yeah, small, medium enterprise. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, of course, everyone, everywhere, every company should prepare for the development of a technology and for SME, it's depend on the, the product. Maybe in my opinion, uh, for production is not so much related to SME because the product maybe is also a simple product. But for let's say marketing and uh, how to make our product go international, for example, and how to make uh, consumers uh, easy to find our product is very important and this need technology. So in my opinion, SME uh, will be related to management control systems, not to the human activity uh, systems. Yeah, so that's my answer and we know that uh, that the, the, the second uh, question, optimum, optimum actually the best solution, but the best solution could be changed anytime. It's dynamic system. 
So no is the best solution, but next time this is not the best solution. So there is no best solution actually, but there always a better solution. But when for some time, for some time, a certain time, maybe it is the best solution, but the next time this could be, uh, should be improved. So like that, thank you. Thank you, Prof Hakim. It should be the last question, this is Prof. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for still with us until the end of the session. The participant is now is 268, still with us together until 10 past 10 o'clock this morning. Hopefully we have the same experience and sharing with Prof Hakim. Is there any closing mark from Prof Hakim? No, you are here. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us and stay healthy. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.